Welcome to the Port Charlie Podcast, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week, as always, is... Bonjour, I'm Namio. Yay! <laughs> oh, so we've got two weeks to catch up on, because one week, uh, we've just been pounded with problems this past couple of yeah. weeks. Yeah. Technology problems, scheduling problems... Psychological problems, you know, everything. Yes, all the problems. And then, <coughs> and, and then this past weekend, we, we got the, the big shocker news, which um, I'm not going to go into do too in-depth here, because this, because I'm saving that all up for another show, so. Yeah. But, but yeah, that, that did impact our scheduling as well. Yes. So, um, anyway, that aside, um... I, I want to address this right at the top of the show. Um, a- actually, before I address this, I do want to put out there that yes, I do have the Patreon page, and we finally, I Yay. finally have a patron <laughs> Yay. who has donated, and I, I will, I will give her the proper shout out on the next Thespian talk, as promised. But this is going to come out before then. But but you know, I'm putting that out there because you know maybe it will help. Uh, maybe it will get the floodgates open and other people in. And she's only doing a ten dollars a month, and it's like you know what? If if I had sixty listeners and all of those listeners donated, you know, pledged ten dollars a month, then that that would be a decent, that'd be a good what six hundred dollars. So that would that would be great. And, that would and, be and that enough would, to get the site updated. <laughs> site updated and oh god, <laughs> equipment and then you know once things are taken care of, I, I think in the Patreon stuff I did mention that I. I the living expenses once it gets to that point would be a given, but um, but it is also used for going to be used for other things. Uh, so we'll have to let's see how that goes. If you want to check that out, it's patreon.com p a t r e o n dot com slash gomer two one double x. You can go there, and if you donate ten dollars or more, then you get to listen to and watch these episodes early. <laughs> so usually they go Ooh. up the day after we record them. And if, if you donate the $10 or more, you can get them same day. So <laughs> I'll probably mess around with my scheduling a little bit after that. And that not only applies to this, but that also applies to all the other videos I'm working on, because I've been working on Let's Play videos for the past couple of days. Sweet. So, yeah, and uh, my girlfriend is actually doing some title art, car- title art work for me, too. So. Nice. So I was like, yay! yay. I'm dating an artist. <laughs> and an award-winning animator. Nice. Yes. Very, very nice. So, 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 yeah. But, anyways, all, all of that said, the, there is the one thing I do want to address. And it has to do with, you know, closer to the end of the, of this past week. Um, you know, Lucas, he's back in town. We all, everybody knew it was going to happen. It was inevitable. Once we found out that Julian Jerome is Lucas's father. Biological oh. father. Let me, let me clarify. And... For those who haven't been a part of the show before, Lucas is gay. He came out to his parents uh, like in the mid 2000s. His mother was at first kind of rejected, rejected him a little bit, and then she got overprotective of him. His father, on his deathbed, said, "You know what? I am fucking proud of you." And then, you know, and then that was that was all he wrote there. And um, and so Lucas. And now. Sorry. Go ahead. And, and now Lucas is back in town, and he and Brad share an on-screen kiss. I gay love triangle, gay love triangle. It's all so awesome. Yes. <laughs> I don't think I've seen this happen on General Hospital before. I don't know if it's happened on other soaps, but I'm pretty sure this is the first time I've seen it happen on GH. If I am wrong, somebody please correct me, because I want to make sure I'm right on that. So, um, so yeah, that happened, and I will talk about how that happened later on, but that happened, and so I went, you know, went and checked around all the, you know, all the Facebook pages, the groups, and all of that, and, yeah, the, 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 the fundies have come out to play. Uh, of course they have. Because I shouldn't expect to see two men kissing on my daytime TV when my children could be watching. What am I going to say to my child when he asks why those two men are kissing? I actually responded to such a question. I said, 
you just tell him, well, sometimes boys like to kiss each other. That's the simplest thing. It's no yeah. different. And, and, and a lot of these people did get a lot of good calling out as well. Good. Because at the same time, they're, they're, they're bitching about two men kissing on TV and even implied sex mm -hmm. you know, going on. You also have like scenes between heterosexuals that are going on that are almost practically naked. You yep. also have murder. You've also got theft. You've got you've got you basically are covering all of the deadly sins right here on the, on this one soap opera. So um, yeah, two guys kissing compared to oh I don't know a fucking mob war breaking out. That's kind of low on the scale there. You, 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 yeah. you have the wrong priorities here. So, yeah. They usually do. Mm -hmm. And of course they pull out, they think of the children! What about the children? The children are going to be fine. They, they, they are. Alright. I mean, I, I kind of hope, hope that when my mother gets to this point when she's catching up, she knows the kiss is coming. She knows mm. it's coming. But when I'm, I'm hoping that when she does get up to that point, the kids are either going to be here or, or, or are here by that particular point, and they see this and they ask, because I want, I, I would like to be out there and tell them, yeah, sometimes boys like to kiss other boys. There's nothing wrong with it. It's perfectly natural, and mm -hmm. it is not a sin. Because I know, because and and I say that for the benefit because while my mother will not condemn gays, you know, she is for equal marriage and all of that. She thinks homosexuality is a sin. Oh, she's almost there. <laughs> no, she's, she's, she's almost to where I am. But, but, you know, she's close enough to where it, it matters, so. Yeah. So, so good on her on that. But, yeah, I, I kind of, I just wanted to get that out of the way. I did not expect to be dressing homophobes on this show. But, I did. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, uh, I just I like the the main thing for me about that about that plot line is, you know, a few months ago, who would have guessed that there would be two hot dudes vying for Brad of I all know. people? <laughs> Mr. Horndog tried to blackmail uh Michael into having sex with him. I mean, just, you know, <laughs> yeah. Chasing anything with a penis, uh, whether it wanted him or not, and uh, now he is smack dab in the middle of a love triangle, and I kind of love it. Yes. <laughs> uh, although I did to to, to mention the the uh, General Hospital page one last time, I actually put up, you know, I said, you know, as a as a host of a podcast that focuses on GH, I just want to say, you know what. I, I like this. I support you guys. First comment was like, well, why not just enjoy it for what it is? It's just a romantic love triangle. I said, yeah. you know what? I, I agree with that sentiment. The only problem is you have all of these Bible-thumping Jesus humpers that are sitting there saying, well, you shouldn't have it. <laughs> <laughs> that, should is, not that, is not a, that is not a phrase I'd ever heard before. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of pulled that phrase out of my ass. But, I like it, though. We sh you, sh you should keep it. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's you just, uh, you know, I, I agree with that sentiment, but as long as the fundies are going to come out and froth at the mouth, and, and th they even threat they've even threatened to, or probably are boycotting the show, just because two men are kissing, and it's just, really? You're, you're going <coughs> to, yeah, okay, you know, it's Bye-bye. Your, lo your loss, I mean, we're, we're going to have, we're going to have a character that hasn't been on the show in 30 years come, you know, come back on at the end of the week. Of this particular week, so you know. So uh, yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm excited to see this one, which. Uh, but unfortunately, I think at the end of this week, we're you know we're going to be losing Robert Scorpio again for a while. So I was like, no. Well, uh, and according to the articles that I've been reading, we're going to lose Robin again soon. Yeah, which. Uh, they're being pretty tight-lipped about uh, how that's going to happen, but I'm like, why? Why bring her back? No. Just take her away again. Like that's. I don't know, but we'll 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 have to see. I mean, obviously, uh, the actress Kim McCullough, you know, she's 
doing her own thing as well. But and of course, it's not going to be a permanent thing. It's not meant to be a permanent thing. So, yeah. so it's not like Robin's going to be gone forever. <coughs> not going to. I I doubt they're going to kill her off. So, and if they do, then you know, then it's going to be like, oh yeah, she'll be back at some point. They'll find yeah. a way. They always do. <laughs> Almost always. It's true. Yeah, there, there are. I guess there are rumors, unconfirmed rumors, cir- circulating that Jason's going to come back and recast as somebody other than than Cloud Strife, <laughs> uh, which might be. You know, I, I think I've, I've said before. You know, I want, I want to, Coma Wife and Jason to come back at the same time, and Silas and Sam still to stay together. That would, that would be interesting. Cause, cause, cause that's my 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 OTP. Mine. Mine. Oh, Nina oh. Jason, your one true pairing. Yes. Um, it, which, uh, that, that's, that storyline is, uh, we might as well talk about Silas and Sam. Yes. Because, uh, you know, uh, I think when we left off, um, uh, Detective Nathan had just, uh, confronted Silas and shown him the, uh, um, prescription mm-hmm. signed by Silas uh, for the antidepressant that uh, put his wife in the coma. Yes. And uh, Sam brought up the suggestion, what if it was Ava? Which mm-hmm. is entirely possible. And so Sam decided to use her uh, magical PI powers <laughs> to uh, start looking into it. Uh, and at the end of this week, she actually found the pharmacist who filled the prescription and sat down to talk to him while both Nathan and Silas were there. And uh, the pharmacist, he recognized uh, Ava's picture, but said that Silas was the one who filled the prescription. And to Sam's credit, like, this is the, this is like the first time that, uh, you know, someone doing vaguely law enforcement y stuff has not acted like a complete fucking idiot. Yeah. Um, because Sam's like, wait, if you, uh, you know, you, you said that you remember this after all this time, specifically because, uh, Silas's wife went into a coma, if that's the case, why didn't you tell the police at the time? That's a very good question. Exactly, and and what's funny is <clears throat> Nathan's standing right there, and he's and he said the same thing. He's like, "That's a good question." It's like, yes, it is a good question, and the person in the room who's not a cop is the one who asked it. Yeah, <clears throat> it's like Nathan. I I I could understand you know his motivation. His he, he's his drive to find to get justice, but. It's like, dude, He's slow the fuck down. Vision. Anna's yeah. even telling you, dude, shut the fuck mm. up, slow the fuck down. Uh. 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 And meanwhile... And, then she, gives, and yeah. then she gives them a week to solve this case. Yeah. Mm. Because Anna kind of sucks at her job. Yeah. She really... Like, what's Harley's Police Department? I think it has just... to be... I think it's a city of informed attributes... Because um, I'm sure off-screen, a lot of things that that uh, that that justify them having their jobs happen, <coughs> but but on-screen we only see the ones that are the most dramatic. And unfortunately, the ones that are that are the most dramatic also are the ones that paint them in the most incompetent light. Yes. Well, okay. So so Carly is still missing, uh, and uh, I don't know what the hell Heather's plan is at this point because she's been dragging Carly around for mm-hmm. like a week just kind of fucking with her yeah you know dragged her to the boathouse of the quarterman mansion you know almost got caught a couple of times by by AJ and Monica because they're doing their thing AJ is AJ went to one Alcoholics Anonymous meeting he's kind of still off the wagon and yeah and and Lucky for him, you know, he still has support from, like, Michael, and I, and I think his mom is supporting him, too. Yeah. You know, you know, he, he has his support group, which, again, you know, when, as I've said before, 
he I think it's one of those things he knows he has it but at the same time it, it's just the, the the feelings and the mental stress it's, it's just enough to where it's like yeah he he he, he knows uh, he knows it's there, but he doesn't feel like it's there or it's enough or, or what have you, or that yeah. he doesn't deserve it. And that's you know, why he's off the wagon. That's why he takes the drink, because it's like, you know, they say they care, but they don't really, you know, that that's his mental attitude behind it. And that's a really scary place to be. Uh, but at any rate, um, eventually, AJ at one point thought he heard a raccoon down there which it turns out is actually Carly. And he tells Tracy about it. And Tracy, for, for all of her for all of her thing, you know, she tries to get people to go down there to take care of it because, well, would you want to take care of a rodent? No. no. And raccoons? Raccoons are fucking scary, man. Is it? Tracy has many flaws, but being terrified of a raccoon is not one of them. I, uh, I volunteered for about six months at an animal hospital that uh, takes in wildlife and you know, basically they get the, the animals healthy and then send them to um, a service that rehabilitates them and then releases them back into the wild. And so I saw a lot of uh, animals that, you know, wild animals just straight out of the Raccoons are fucking terrifying, especially up close. They have these big teeth and these long ass talons and if you get too close they will fuck you up. Yeah, no wonder Tracy didn't want to go down there. Nor AJ. Uh, nor no. Alice, of all people. Again, you know what? <laughs> it is perfectly valid. Uh, yeah, raccoons and possums. Possums have the most teeth of any land mammal. Oh, shit. And they are fucking terrifying. Now, both of these... And, but the thing, and the thing is, <clears throat> both of these creatures are adorable as fuck when they're babies. Then they I mean, grow up and become fucking scary, and then they become fucking demons. So yeah, <laughs> if so, you see a wild animal, don't touch it. Don't go yeah. near it. If you so, see a raccoon, run away. <laughs> I think this was part of the inspiration for Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh, but yeah, eventually Luke gets sent out there, and he comes across Carly. And I was I was floored when he actually found her. I was like, I'm sure I, I was sure that he was gonna go in there and it was gonna be empty, but then he actually found her and I was like, Oh, he found her. Okay, so how many minutes before Heather comes in and catches him? And sure enough Heather catches him. And he <laughs> seems to hold up okay. Well it like I Luke makes me happy because he does things that are smart most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, like when he actually shot Faison. Yes. I was like, thank you! Finally, yes. someone just uses their fucking gun. And, you know, Heather was holding a gun on him, and he knocked it out of her hand with the club that he had in his hand. I'm like, thank you! Thank you! <laughs> <laughs> yes. <clears throat> and then finally someone figures out... <coughs> Excuse me. That they can use weapons, and they don't just have to do what Heather says. Exactly. But then, unfortunately, suddenly goons, and they get the drop on Luke. Yeah. Unfortunately, and I don't know where he is. What yeah, did they, they do with him? They haven't. They haven't um, revealed that yet. No. It's like, and now Tracy's probably going to be worried and starting to get slowly pissed off a little bit more. Well, and I... Luke, and he has this thing about disappearing. I was trying to figure out how much time has passed because um, you know, they showed that, that happening and then Tracy comes out a few, presumably like, within the same hour or two Tracy goes out there and the boathouse is empty and Luke is gone. Yeah. And then Heather takes Carly and they show up on Spoon Island. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I'm like, okay, how long has Luke been missing at this point? Yeah, it can't be more than a day, though. I don't think. I, I don't know. It's, it, it is so hard to tell the passage of time in this show. <laughs> it is. It really is. Uh, but, uh, uh. but yeah, you brought up Windermere and 
the kids the kids discover them or at least they discover heather yes and heather makes this whole whole thing up about being hired by nicholas and 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 to to what i think uh, spencer's credit you know he takes this title of prince very seriously okay. <coughs> spencer was being a little shit this week i kind of loved it um <laughs> well cuz <'cause laughs> and it was it was really funny because so the kids are out there because spencer and cameron both like emma mm-hmm. and they had decided that they were going to fight a duel and Emma was just kind of like, okay. Because <laughs> poor Emma doesn't realize, you know, she's just confused. She likes them both. <coughs> and and Heather, Heather is the one who's like, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, you know, let the boys fight over you. You should choose. And, <laughs> and like being all feminist and like teaching Emma these, you know, good life lessons while she's got Carly locked in a box in the other room. I'm just... <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and holding Heather of at, 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 what was it? What was it? Sword point, stick point, something like that. Something like that. That was pretty awesome. I mean, for a little kid to do that, that is pretty awesome. <laughs> and I have to say, like Heather, Heather did an amazing job convincing the kids not to say anything. Yeah, it's just that's good. you know Nicholas is going to have to go down to the stables at some point, or or the fact that. Um, Spencer, I don't remember if he did bring it up or if he's or or what, but I know they, he's they going to that, eventually bring up the fact that yo, yeah, the lady down at the stables. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> but yeah, that was that was uh, amusing. Mm-hmm. Uh, that then that brings us to what the fuck, Obrecht. Yes. Oh man, because yo. Know, they uh, they gather for a staff meeting because they're going to announce the new chief of staff, and fucking Obrecht walks in, and she is in charge. She has not only been released, but she is in charge of the hospital now. Yeah, and because the WSB <laughs> for whatever reason dropped all the charges, and characters I'm sorry, are, are the WSB. Are, oh god, like I talk about the Port Charles Police Department being the most incompetent police force in the history of fiction. But really, I mean, they got nothing on the WSB. Have the WSB, like, like since I've been watching, the WSB has literally done nothing but fuck up and uh, release criminals. Yeah, although, to possibly their credit in this one, they... Obrecht may have had information that could help them, and they worked at a deal. You know, and because that does happen, I'm sure that happened. That's how Julian got the, got away with what he did. The WSB, I don't think they're so much as incompetent as they are manipulative bastards. They don't care so much about justice as as, as in in certain cases, as long as they get the people that they are going for or get the biggest fish possible. Yeah, I still call that incompetence because they fucking they were gonna put Obrecht in charge of Robin, the woman Again. that she held captive for two years. And Robin's like, "Fuck that shit! I'm not on a contract." <laughs> yeah, but apparently Patrick is, and I'm like, I think that's when you're justified in breaking your contract. I think yeah. that's pretty justified. Yeah, but at the same time, you also, you know, if you break contract, it might be hard for him to get work elsewhere. So that 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 that's a that's a thing too, you know. And other places may look and see her record and and you know, and and see all of this, and they may not take, they may not have mercy on him. Of course, you know, in in the real world, well, first uh, in the real world, I don't think this would ever happen anyway. But uh, in the real world. The best thing that they could possibly do is go on a press bit, you know, <laughs> press tour. Mm-hmm. Robin and Anna and Patrick and you know anybody else that Obrecht and 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 Brit go on mm-hmm. a press tour, being like, "This is not okay. This is the kind of person Liesel Obrecht is. This is what she has done. Here is the proof." 
mm-hmm. and have a bunch of you know pressure put on the hospital to fucking fire her. But yes. that wouldn't that wouldn't bring as much drama. No, and I just have to wonder: a) what information did she give to the WSB, Ooh. and b) what does she have on on that one crusty old board member? No one because knows. Because as far as we're no, as far as we know, <laughs> Tracy and Nicholas, also hospital board members, have no idea, no idea. what happened, or or at least how it happened. Nicholas knows by now, because because Britt told him and Lulu. Yes. Ah. Uh, and she's still working out things, you know, between her and Dante. They're still separated. And of course, Lulu is staying at Carly's while Carly is missing, and they're looking for Carly who. Who Heather? Oh my God, she 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 is. Oh, she has gone from delightfully funny to oh my God, fucking scary. Yeah. Because she is framing her own son for Carly's murder. Well, supposed murder, because Carly's still alive. Yeah. And she did this by stabbing Carly, smearing her blood on the side of Carly's car, making it look like Carly was attacked. And and then just dropping the knife with Franco's prints on it, and I actually rewatched a little bit, and I have to wonder how the hell did they not find Heather's prints on there? I don't know. We we pres- we presume it's because she was wearing gloves the whole time, not, but no 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 no. Oh, no, that's was... right, because she was holding the knife before him. Uh huh. She was holding his, the knife then, as she held the knife when she stabbed Carly. Yeah, with that's... bare hands. So How magic knife, that? magic knife. Either that or Franco's pants were the only ones they were che- they were checking for, which would be par for the course for the Port Charlie Police Department. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and when they were going over all the evidence, even Dante was like, I don't, I don't know if there's enough, man. Yeah, you know, you know, he had his doubts, and also I have to question. How the hell was there no blood on the ground? If, if you know, I mean, we know. I mean, we know because it wasn't That's there. True. But, but going by the other evidence, you'd think one of them would have questioned, well, wait, why isn't there blood on the ground? Some of it would. Because have everybody the sucks. I know, right? Everybody sucks. And Michael, <coughs> Michael should have been a genre savvy when they were checking out Carly's car. They saw the suitcase, mm-hmm. thinking, okay, Carly might be in the trunk. No trunk, there's a suitcase. And Michael's like, well, what if she's in there? Yeah. And Morgan takes him in, and he's like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> That's sick. And I was like, it's <clears throat> sick, but it's it's a good question, Morgan. Shut the fuck up, dude. Yeah. Oh, you you little betraying <laughs> bastard. Well, okay, that's that's how that's how Sonny sees it now because Sonny got wise to Morgan. Yes, which which of course of- he did because Morgan sucks. Because Morgan is an idiot, and um, and so what? What he? What Sonny did was feed Morgan some bad information. You know, supposedly they had found Carlos, and it was going to have him brought down the docks or whatever. You know, as bait for Julian. Well, Morgan went back and told Julian, who went down there himself, got himself a good ass kicking. Which, yeah, courtesy of Sonny and Sean and Mister Lavery. That was hilarious. I was, <laughs> I was like, like, "Yeah, go Duke! Yay!" <laughs> that that had to have been therapeutic for him. That had to have, yes. Oh my God! So, uh, so yeah, Morgan betrays Sonny, and Sonny knows about it, and and ev- you know everybody on both sides knows that. Yes, yeah, Sonny knows. He knows. He's not happy. At all. At all, indeed. Oh, man. Oh, okay, so. So, yes, Morgan, you know, and, and, and of course, pieces were starting to come together because he kept getting seen with Ava, and he got seen with Julian. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, it, you know, people are not stupid there, Morgan. Not like you are. <laughs> and then, and then Franco, poor Franco, I, I, I have to say, dude. Uh, you know, he doesn't realize his mother is still alive, unfortunately. Yeah. And, and and he had the right idea. The note was not written by Carly, you know. But, you know, 
but some people could chalk it up to, you know, denial at the same time. And, you know, Kiki's on his side, she's supporting him. And when it comes to find out that that Michael, after threatening to go to the press, got Scott to put out a warrant for Franco's arrest, you know, Kiki hid Franco for a little bit in her apartment with Michael. That was... That was yeah. tense, yeah. Mm -hmm. Finally got him out of there, and then, you know... Uh, oh man, that was that that was that was definitely something. Uh, and and of course Silas came by at one point and told Kiki you know about his past and everything. And you know that that, that was a nice little bonding scene between father and daughter. Yes, it was it was nice. Um, and then he got called away because Obrecht. Yeah. Who. Let's see, a German trying to run a tight ship in a hospital. I, I don't know, I'm having some very... I'm, I'm thinking of some very unfortunate implications right now. <laughs> um, yeah, considering Obrecht and considering her her um, her, her, her um, place on the... Um, well, what is it? The, 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 you know, the chaotic <laughs> neutral or what what have you. Um, you know, uh, I think it's like the D&D &D, um, alignment chart or whatever. I, I, I think is what it is. Considering her alignment, yeah, uh, the, there are some very unfortunate implications. Although, she did step up and back uh, Silas when when Nate was bothering him. Well, I will give I her mean, that credit. I mean, yeah, it, it's not for it, it's not for like you know because she's good or anything, but but you know, still she well, stepped up for him. It, well, uh, my favorite thing about that is she was like, "You work for Anna Devane? Get out! Get out! Get out!" <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. We know where uh, her priorities are, and then she she turns to Silas and she's like, "Is it true? Did you kill your wife?" And he's like, "No." And she's like, eh, "Do whatever you want." <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "That is." I told you, I just told you no, and she's like, "Yeah, sure, whatever." <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> oh wow. But yeah, speaking of the <laughs> hospital stuff, we Sabrina is pregnant. We've known this. Patrick yes. came and confronted her, <sighs> and out comes Carlos. You don't have to worry, Doc. The baby is mine. Yeah. And it's like I know you're trying to help Carlos, but you're coming off like an ass. Because he is an ass. I, you know, and I I used to like Sabrina. Mm -hmm. Anymore, I just want to punch her in the face. Like, cause punching her in the face won't hurt the baby. Um, True. Is because I'm like you are being so stupid, and everybody is calling her on it. Everybody, yeah. there is not a single person who thinks she is doing the right thing, but she has got her head so far up her own ass, mm -hmm. and she's so terrified of becoming a Brit. Even though the yeah. two situations are not com comparable at all. No. Oh. At all. I mean, the only the only comparison. Okay, they're female. They're pregnant. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's all. Sabrina did not have Brit's disposition at the time. She she's trying to do the right thing. She is actually carrying Patrick's baby. <clears throat> yeah, and she didn't want to tell him because she didn't want to, you know, worry about you know whether or not he's going to leave Robin for her or or put a strain on their marriage, which is understandable and it's fine you know i mean you know you could argue yeah patrick has a right to know but at the same time which which is more important making sure he knows or making or the price you would have to pay in order for him to know and that could be a very strained marriage and it but it's just, ugh. you know what patrick uh, and, patrick would want to know patrick would want to know that he's gonna have another kid mm -hmm. that's that's what it comes down to yeah. Yeah, and, and and that is that is that. Oh god. But, and I'm I'm hoping <laughs> I'm hoping that'll come out soon because you know everybody in this universe just talks about all their personal shit out in the open. And you know it's I think we have we've talked about how just you know sound does not work normally in the Port Charles universe. 
because and uh, you know I think maybe that's why people stand around and talk about their personal shit because they they know that uh, no one's gonna hear them unless it's convenient. And this time it just happened to be convenient because Elizabeth overheard Sabrina and Felix after Sabrina gave Felix an epic, you know, what the fuck, dude. Yeah. For for letting it slip to Patrick. And then Elizabeth knows and they're trying to tell her not to tell him. And Felix seems to, at least these past two weeks, Felix seems to just have this knack of saying something and then realizing somebody is right behind him. Yes. I, that happened with Obrecht, and I thought that was hilarious. It was. <laughs> <laughs> and he even lampshaded at that time. He's like, she's right behind me, isn't she? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that was so great. And even Brad called out Felix. That was amazing. Stuff. That was... I was like, oh my god. Because, <clears throat> yeah, you know, Brad is usually just sucking up to Felix all over the place, but this time he's like, you know what, dude? Mind your own goddamn business. And, like, one of the best lines he's ever had is like, Yo, you, you're all up in everybody else's uh, life because you don't have one of your own. It's like, yeah, that's... And that that seems to have calm, that seemed to have uh, you know calmed Felix down a little bit. Well, uh, it, yeah, it gives at least so far. You know, and you know, Felix Felix seems to have taken that to heart, and he's he's trying, you know, to be less like that. But you know, that's <laughs> that fight was the reason that Brad was drinking that night, and why he met Lucas because he was sure yeah. that uh, after that Felix was never going to speak to him again. And lo and behold. Calling him on his shit is apparently what uh, flipped Felix around and be like, okay, let's you and me go do this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah. And, and then there's going to be that awkward triangle. And found out that Brad is the son of a mobster. Yes. Or, or son and or grandson, I think, I think both in this case. From back in the 80s. I don't remember those particular characters... But, uh, you know, that's what the General Hospital Wiki is for. We can, I can always research for next show, if need be. But, um, but yes, Brad's from a mobster family. Lucas just found out that Julian's alive, and and he's, his dad's a mobster who thought who everybody thought was dead. And he was not exactly happy with Bobby for keeping that from him. Yeah. And Bobby was like, well, I was going to tell you. And he's like, and, and he, and I think it was him and, and somebody else were like, you know, you know, you know, he, he's not a little kid anymore. Yeah. You don't need to be this overprotective of him. You know, he's a big boy. He can take care of himself. And he can get his own booty, too. <laughs> yes, he can. <laughs> and, you know, I have to say, I love I loved Lucas's approach because, uh, you know, when he found out that, uh, you know, Brad was going to be going on a date with Felix... Uh, he was like, oh, you know what, I, I get it, because, you know, they had talked about Felix the night before, um, and, uh, he's like, but this is the first date, that means I still got a chance. Yes. And, <laughs> like, I, I, I love it, I loved every, I loved every second of that this, this week, I, that just made me so happy. <laughs> yeah, and I do like how, how, you know, their, their gay characters are portrayed, you know, I mean, yeah, you have Felix that has some of the more stereotypical "oh my god, girl" type moments, but I, I'm writing that off more as just a character trait, not as yes. a uh, stereotype, not as an exaggeration. Yeah, stereotype. Thank you. Brad, he he's horny, but he just happens to be gay. Yes. And then you have Lucas, who's just a guy mm -hmm. who likes other guys. That's all. Well, the, that's you the know. thing that they're all characters, not caricatures. Exactly. I mean, awesome. Felix, I mean, I mean, we've seen Brad. I mean, he came when we started getting to know him better. You know, he's a jackass. He was an asshole, you know, who would fuck anything with a penis. And now he's developed more into actually wanting a relationship with Felix, wanting a little bit more, opening up to Felix, mm -hmm. you know, and, that sort of thing. And what's kind of funny about that is, you know, I have my doubts that uh, if uh, Brad hadn't, been trying to change and hadn't, uh, you know, grown and evolved a little bit in pursuit of Felix. If uh, Lucas would even be interested in him, I know, right? So 
there you go. I mean, you character development. You got some good quality. Oh. Granted, it was like you know same night booty, but yeah. you know heterosexuals do that too. But yeah, but you know who would who would have thought being a decent human being is attractive? I know, right? And he's finding this out, and he's learning this, and it's it's a good thing. Wait, it's definitely a good wait, thing. Wait, people I, I like me when I'm nice and don't try to blackmail them into sex? This is a revelation. There you go. Oh, so <laughs> yes. Oh. Okay. So, um, speaking of sex, uh, Scott and Lucy. Yes. Because <laughs> Lucy, I I love her scenes with Kevin. Kevin is easily one of my favorite characters on the show. I wish they would use him more often. Because he is a psychiatrist. He he. He has some of the best lines. He's up, he's up there with Silas. If you give if you give him the room, he'll be right up there with Silas in terms of the snark department and the joke department. Because <laughs> he's sitting there joking with Lucy after she had a nightmare or, or dream or catapult nightmare about you know you know she was getting it on with Scott and then right behind Scott up comes Kevin. Any room for your husband in this fantasy? <laughs> <laughs> that was that she, was awesome. And it's like a double catapult nightmare almost, but because like she catapults up, and as she's doing that, Kevin wakes up and screams too. It's like ah, <laughs> and he jokes about, oh, what were you dreaming of cheating on me? And she just takes it so defensively. It's like, yeah, how could you not see that? <laughs> well, we don't see much of Kevin on screen, so we could assume maybe he does and is just setting it aside or dealing with it in his own way. We don't know. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, Lucy goes once. Once Scott puts out the warrant for Franco, Lucy goes gives Scott a big old what the hell hero, and they end up fucking again. Yep. And this is after she tells Felicia that it's not going to happen. And it's just oh, Lucy, Lucy, <laughs> Lucy, Lucy, and Scott, 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 Scott. Well, and, uh, and you know, meanwhile, Mac, you know, Mac and Felicia are talking, and Felicia tells Felicia Mac. Will. Yeah, <coughs> and uh, Mac's first instinct is to run over to Scott and punch him in the face. Well, well, no, well, no. His first instinct was to tell Kevin. Well, yeah, but he's not. And, and then, and then, in lieu of that, he just said, um, you know, knocks on the door. Hey, you! Boom! Right in the face. <laughs> Stay the fuck away from Lucy Co. Yeah, <laughs> it's like Jeebus, Mac. But yeah, I, I do appreciate the fact that Lucy is not doing this just to be a bitch or anything. That the, you know they're showing her not doing it to just be a bitch. That yeah. she really is conflicted about it. Yes. You know she she loves the time with Scott. She loves Scott, but she loves Kevin too. You know, and 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 I understand that that this kind of maybe kind of stereotypical for soap operas too. You know, oh I love him, but I love him too. I love him, but he's my husband, and I love them both. You know, the the big dilemma there. You know, it does happen in real life. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. It does. So so it's a it's little bit of truth in television there. And I like... And, and, you know, even if it's overused in a soap opera, or it could be overused, I, I still think it's a good plot device. Yeah, well... You know, I mean, they keep overusing it for a reason, because it is a good plot device. My thing, the, my thing with Lucy and Scott, though, is they already were married once. Yeah. And they, they got they're... divorced. Yeah. Lucy. So, I'm sorry, honey. <clears throat> Maybe focus on the marriage you have now rather than the one that failed. Yeah. That would be a good idea. Uh, and and I, I think in her mind, she realizes this and and, and, and she, she wants to make it work, but at the same time, it's like, ah! Yeah. Uh, do not envy her at all. I don't really envy Scott either, because, you know, because he's going to be... Because I have a feeling that either way, he's going to be hurt no matter what. Yeah. So everybody's going to get end up getting hurt no matter what. So there is no envy there. Just just none. Yeah. Um, so, oh God, okay, is there anybody else that we have not covered over the past two weeks? Oh God, I'm <laughs> sure there is. There... Uh, let's see. So much has um, happened. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Let's see. 
I mean, we got AJ who, who's... Oh! Oh, that did have this this past two weeks. AJ is starting to remember what happened the night Connie was killed. Like, very, very little, and then he keeps getting interrupted. Yes, it's, it's, it's like it's coming close. He's like, maybe I didn't kill her. Because he remembers the elevator doors opening and asking who was there. He's starting to remember... And I'm thinking, yes, finally! That goddamn so, time! So that he can say it was fucking Ava goddamn Jerome! Who, along with Julian, were first pegged for Carly's disappearance by both Kiki and Morgan, respectively. Oh, and Morgan, as much of a dumbass as he is, okay, this is still a dumbass moment because, you know, you're, 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 you're slamming a mob <laughs> boss against a wall you idiot. You're lucky you work for him and he understands. You know, it's still a dumb move, but at the same time... At the same time, Morgan is dumb. Yeah, he is dumb, and he genuinely is worried about his mom. Yeah. So, you know, you have, there is that. And there was at one point, where, you know, before Franco was brought down to the police station for questioning, that... that I think it was Kiki, mentioned, he and Kiki mentioned the letter or something. And one of them offered to go up and get it, and, and, and Dante's like, no, 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 no need to worry about that. And it's like, dude, fuck, man. Oh. But yeah, and, and, and Silas' scenes with Nathan in the interrogation room, you know, when, when, he, when it was revealed that the prescription was written out and signed with Silas's name, uh, I, I love his scenes there. Just <laughs> <laughs> like he's talking about in case twenty years ago, you know, when the, when the when the most he had to worry about was Saturday morning cartoons or whatever. Yeah, something like that. That line, ah, I love it. <laughs> he, even when he is deep shit, he, he can pull out a snark every now. Yes, and he can. <laughs> that that is lovely. <laughs> oh man. So um oh god, let's see. Let's see, we've got, we've hit Silas, Nathan, um, Ava got, Ava got pulled around a little bit here and there, you know. You know, I love how they, they were sitting there trying to, you know, she and Julian were, co were, uh, covering their collective asses yes. with each other. You know, it's like, did they do that? Let's see, they did that with something, oh yeah, the pickle, the pickle Lila poisoning. They did that. And they're like, they're like, did you? No, did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to see a call back to that. Oh, there is one other thing that? that I that I did forget. Sunny, yo, through Olivia, mm -hmm. they uh oh ho, 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 ho. oh yeah they they one, uh <laughs> one thing that viewers tend to forget. I admit I forgot that Olivia is half owner of the MetroCord, and and the MetroCord I believe also has the uh, the uh, uh, um, 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 the magazine newspaper. Yes offices as well yeah julian is the enemy of her boyfriend she can legally have him kicked out for potentially being you know for being for illegal activities because yes. he said right there on the front page he is julian jerome and julian jerome has a reputation in poor charles we don't want him here you're kicked out of you're kicked out of this your business is kicked out and um oh yeah you're kicked out of your hotel room so he's so Julian is now living with Ava by this point, <laughs> which yeah. is hilarious. And and yeah, Julian is like looking at Sunny and be like, "Yeah, this is how you come after me." And Sunny's like, "No, this is just for fun." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Say what you will about Sunny. When he's enjoying it, he, he, you enjoy it too. Yes. <laughs> that is great. That was just awesome. Oh, I can't believe I almost forgot about that. Almost. Not quite. Oh, so what else is there? Um, let's see. Nicholas and Britt had some time together with with Britt going in late because, well, you know, she doesn't want to work for her mother. I don't blame her. And, and oh, God. And, and just, <laughs> oh, um, 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 dead air. Cannot let happen. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, God. Uh, let's see. Obrecht pissed a lot of people off. 
Of course. Uh, told Elizabeth that her pay would have to be docked if she left ten minutes early to go pick up her son from her play date. From his play date. Oh yeah, because uh, Obrecht's a bitch. Uh, Britt is feeling increasingly guilty about uh, Ben, and I I love the way um, they uh, when when she was talking with Lulu and trying to convince Lulu to uh, you know go back to Dante. She's doing it while holding Ben in her arms. Yeah. You know, that just that constant reminder, yeah, this you you are you are responsible for the problems in Lulu's marriage right now. Mhm. Mm and the solution uh is this baby that you stole from her. Yeah. Basically. You know, and I and I like uh you know, um there's this one point uh earlier on where Lulu and uh Nicholas are talking and um they're both kind of cooing over over Ben and uh, you know they're talking about Lulu not being able to harvest any more eggs and uh, you know Lulu says you know it's not Britt's fault it's not like she stole my last chance to have a child except she's totally did well technically yes, exactly. her, she did under a coercion from her mother yeah it's not like Britt wanted to it's just you know she, she just had no spine when it came to her mother which doesn't excuse her actions. It just makes them more yeah. understandable. Yeah. And, and I think Britt, in character, would agree with that. It's like, yeah, it doesn't excuse it. It's just, you know, this is the circumstances behind it because my mother is, is a cunt. Uh, yeah. Very much so. Mm. Oh, let's see. What else happened around the hospital besides Felix? And then, the, the, yeah, they... Yeah, yeah, I mentioned that they... That Liz we mentioned Elizabeth found out about Sabrina, and they all, Patrick and Robin almost found out, but then they got called away on other things yep. before Elizabeth could tell them, and it's just, Elizabeth really doesn't want to keep this from Patrick and Sabrina, I don't blame her, because <laughs> it goes back to, to, to the whole situation with the pregnancy anyway, because on the one hand, if you tell Patrick, marriage could be in trouble, but on the other hand, you don't tell me find out later that's going to be really hurtful yes that's, that's going to hurt so it's like wh what the hell you know and yes carlos is still an ass granted he's trying to help and, and then that works yeah. in his that works in his credit but he's still an ass he still is yes he is mm -hmm. and i liked the bit before uh, emma went over to windermere to uh, play with the boys the scene with uh, Robert and Mac with Anna oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just they're, they're, it was great you know with Robert being a grandfather for the first time and having to deal with the boy problems because well yes yeah, so, well it, uh, like I I did uh, you know the, the, the child actors um, are not amazing most of the time but I did get a kick out of the out of Emma you know in, you know her uncle or uncle yeah and, I, I think and grandfather is that like they they're like what's wrong are you sick and she's like i'm lovesick and just kind of throws herself on the table and i'm just it was really <laughs> adorable yeah so the guys are just like oh no <laughs> 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 oh but yeah those two those two those two guys they're awesome uh and it wasn't long after that where anna you know lets robert know that that Obrecht is out, and Robert's like, okay, why well, is Obrecht out? You know, they must have, the WSB must have some bigger fish that, that she's helping them get. Which is, you know, where, where you know, the earlier thing came from. It's from yes. that particular scene, because it's like, yeah. And I have a feeling it has to do with the person who's going to be showing up at the end of this week. Uh, or by the end of this week. So, um, I, I, I have my suspicions. Because it, 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 would, it would fit. It, it would be a good comeback for him. Because as far as we know, he's been in prison since 1981. I mean, Ooh. and everybody assumed he died in prison, but turns out it's not the case. Ugh. And 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 with this person, I have to wonder how Nicholas is going to take it. This is going to be fun. It's going to be a fun, wild ride. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and there's also some speculation. The uh, pharmacist that they spoke to concerning uh, Silas. You know, people are speculating if that guy is Brad's father. And that's uh, why he didn't the cops. Also, 
there's one other note that, that we didn't bring up earlier. We're bringing it up right now, though, and nobody else on the show at least has brought up, but all the fans have brought it up. It could have very well been Steven that people are speculating. Oh! Who forged it and, and walked in. I personally, while it is kind of plausible, from what I'm understanding, Silas and Steven weren't exactly close after childhood. And uh-huh. this was, you know, let's see, this was 20 years ago during middle school, after he graduated middle school, medical school. So Silas had to have been in maybe his mid 20s at most. Uh huh. At, at, or at least, or at most by that point. And the two of them, you know, Steven was off doing his rock and roll serial killer thing and going absolutely insane. And so he may not have had any kind of connection with Silas. Or maybe he or and this is this is the one that may likely happen steven understood and knew and was jealous and he wanted to get back at silas for some reason i don't know that would be interesting because they're they were both played by the same actor weren't they yes yeah (laughs) of course Hmm. but yeah but uh, or they could just be going the same way and dependent on ava and, 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 it, and it turns out to be Ava, so we'll have to we will have to find out, won't we? Oh Indeed. God! So. so yes, that is going to be it for this week. We're going to go ahead and get out of here. Um, thank you guys for listening again. If you want to help support monetarily, there are several ways you can do that. On my site rtgomer.com, we have the ad links. There's also a tip jar if you want to just leave a donation, or if you want to do it on a regular basis and you want to pledge money for better equipment, site upgrades, etc. Um, I have the Patreon page, patreon.com/gomer21x. Uh, Ten dollars, and you can just you know watch and listen to these the day they get finished and the day they go up, you know, before they go live. Um, that and I will work on other incentives as well as as time goes on. I will try and do my best. Um, and if you want to find me otherwise, um, of course, the aforementioned rtgomer.com. That is my site. You can find my stuff on there. You can also find me on nerdvice.com, which this very show gets cross posted to. And I'm putting up more videos on YouTube now as well under gomer 21 double x. Um, you know, and, and a lot of times they'll, I don't think they'll go live before they go up on my site or on Nerdvice or anything, but you can also find videos there as well. I will work on some YouTube exclusives that won't be anywhere else, though, so that, keep an eye on that one. Um, that's about all the places you can find me. If you want to write into the show, actually, something I've been, something I've been meaning to do on all, between all my shows, if you want to write into the show, write into rtgomerprod at gmail.com. Uh, if you're watching the video version of this, it'll uh, it should be on the bottom of the screen. If I remember to actually put it in, <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, and you can write in, write in, you know, and, and, and if we get enough, we, we'll, we'll like read out some fan letters <laughs> or questions or what have you on the show. And, and of course, since this is Port Charlie podcast, please keep them obviously to general hospital related questions if you have any, um, that sort of thing, you know, or if you just want to say hello, we'll we'll read your hello on the air. <laughs> it'll be it'll be fun. Um, again, that's rtgomerprod at gmail.com. And where can we find you, Namio? Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter at, at Naomi Washburn. Uh, you can find me on the fabulous rtgomer.com. Uh, you can find me on Etsy at Namio Stained Glass. I finally, um, <laughs> finally got my Tumblr password again. And so I am also on Tumblr... Uh, my username is Namios Corner. So, sweet. And and oh yes, by the way, by the way, uh, uh, apparently uh, video production runs in the family because uh, your dad's on the site too now. Yes, yes he is. Yes, so uh, go check out his stuff. I think as of this post, he's got like two of them up right now. I think so. So um, so at, well, at least as of this recording, when this goes up on the site, he may have another one. I don't know yet. I I don't know what he's scheduling yet. But um, but yeah, so. It'll be great. Go check them out. Check out check out everybody because we've picked up a few new contributors. So yes. I encourage everybody to go check them out. So uh, with that, thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time. Hopefully, will not be another two weeks. Oh. If it is, I'm going to be really upset. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Namio signing off. 
The Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.